Hey, how you doing there again, folks? Me again, of course, Brandon Wenzel. Come back at you, another offering off my sampler platter. <sighs> yes, indeed, folks, sampler beef series videos I've been doing for a little while. I go over there, try out food and drink items. I eat stuff, I drink stuff, then, folks. Ah, oh, come on now. Eh, I'm gonna talk about stuff. I'm gonna let you know all that you need to know about hopefully delicious stuff that. Time I'm doing this, folks. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, but we'll get to that, folks. It's super simple format. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna try out food and/or drink items for you. Whilst I'm doing so, I'm yammering on about it for a bit. Whilst I'm doing all that, I'm inside my truck. And whilst I'm doing all that, folks, oh, I'm wearing a super cool shirt. Folks, when I wear super cool shirts, I always like to highlight the super cool shirt. What super cool shirt am I wearing for you today, folks? What well, happens to be my boom, my kitty shirt. Very cool shirt. Love this design. If you are uh, unfamiliar with the band Kitty, they are an all-girl metal band that came out in sort of the late 90s from uh, the fine country of Canada. Uh, they were able to sort of really kind of establish a bit of a foothold at that point in time. You know, the new metal scene was still going really strong. Uh, you know, their debut album was received really well. It, they've had some ups and downs since then, you know, a few lineup changes and stuff like that, but um, you know, they kind of went on a hiatus period for a while, uh, which ironically was kind of when I sort of got into them was when they were sort of, you know, more laying low. But thankfully, uh, the year that I'm doing this 2024, they really kind of broke out again. They put out a new album. They went over there. They actually did a full tour and I was fortunate enough. I got to see them perform on one of those tour dates. It's actually where I got the shirt from. I also went over there. I got some videos of said performance. Those videos are on this channel as well, just in case maybe you want to check them out. If nothing else, folks, I'd be more than happy to kind of point you in the right direction as far as their stuff is concerned, because I think they're an incredible band. I think, like, in terms of especially their legacy and just, like, their output, they're fucking phenomenal. But anyway, what am I trying for you today, folks? What are we doing here? Well, it has nothing to do with Kitty or anything like that, but uh, so I happen to be making a trek out today to see one of my friends. It's been, you know, about a month since the last time I saw him. And typically speaking, when I head out this way, I like to stop at one specific place because they got some neato stuff. And it's cool for me just on a personal level, and it provides me with potential review items that I can go over there and I can, you know, create content for. That place is a place called Rocket Fizz Soda and Candy Shop. And I've reviewed a number of things that I've gotten from that place over the years. I stopped in today, I got myself four spiffy sodas, but not actually spiffy sodas because there is a spiffy soda, just spiffy and, you know. But anyway, I'm going to be reviewing one of them for you. What is it, folks? It happens to be, boom, it is Black Bear Root Beer. It has apparently been a legend since 1931. Legend no more, I have gone over there and found it. I have dispelled the legend, it is a real thing. So, yeah, I love root beer. You folks know I love root beer. I'm such a root beer whore. I have an entire playlist called Root Beer Reviews, which is just a playlist of root beer reviews. I have never had black beer root beer. Ah, it's made from Sprecher. So, Sprecher, and I have reviewed some stuff from them, or Sprecher, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I go, I go Sprecher. Uh, they're a, a company out of uh, Wisconsin. So, and not only do they do their own line, they also do some legacy sodas. So, I guess that's the case here. But anyway, let's get a thing for the thing. We'll kind of, maybe it'll be a little bit better like that. Something like that. Ha 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 And let's try it out. Be interested to see what this tastes like. It has a nice fragrance. Nice and sweet. Let's give it a go. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That's nice. I was slightly worried, if I'm being honest, that it would basically just be Spreckers, but in a different bottle. I don't think that they would do that. They seem to be doing a good, good job of keeping the legacy uh, sodas alive under their branding. So, but you know, companies will do what companies will do. Uh, but no, that's definitely not Spreckers. That's definitely very different. It's almost more of kind of like, a, it has kind of a butterscotch sort of flavor to it. Kind of. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go with that. Not as much as like an actual butterscotch beer, which are things, by the way. In fact, I think I even reviewed one a few years ago. Um, 
but yeah, there's there's kind of like a butterscotchy element, like a very sort of like dark kind of like a darker caramel flavor. But it's a sweeter root beer. I like it. I'm definitely not in love with it though. Uh, so I mentioned this in plenty of root beer reviews. When it comes to root beer, there's sort of like two sort of general lines of root beer as far as like, especially commercial root beers, right? On the one hand, you have like your A&Ws and your mugs. They're sweeter root beers, very commercially accessible for pretty much anybody. They're easy to get into. They work well in that regard. Then on the other side of that, you have root beers like Barks and Dad's, which are a little bit sort of heavier root beers, a little bit more complex, a little bit more bite to them. Those are the root beers that I personally prefer. Those are the ones that, for me, feel like a proper root beer. With this, it gears more on the A&W and Mug side. It's more of a sweeter root beer. There's not a lot of complexity to it. Not a lot of bite to it. It's fine. It, the flavor isn't bad or anything. But it's not... It's kind of one note. It's not really giving me a lot to work off of. Again, there's sort of a little bit of almost a butterscotch kind of thing. You can tell there's also sort of like a, um, maybe like a little bit of like an aniseed kind of thing, you know, which a lot of root beers will use something to that effect. Uh, almost a little bit like a, you know, kind of a black licorice sort of flavor. Um, but mind you not, like I'm not saying it tastes like black licorice, but there's just sort of like a, sort of almost like a spiced element to it that gives it a little bit of an edge. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I just, I, I find it to be very okay. It's not doing anything offensive, but it's not doing anything to really stand out. It's a fairly okay root beer. Yeah. Yeah, there's just... There's not a lot of there's not a lot to grab hold of. No, oh, okay. I'm a little bit sad because this was the only root beer that I got out of the sodas that I got from Rocket Fizz. But um, okay. Well, all that said, two questions have to be asked. Would I get it again? Would I recommend it? Uh probably not, and sure. For me personally, yeah, like I said, you know, and mind you, like, I, I don't want to make it seem like I don't enjoy, you know, A&W or even Mug or something like that. Yeah, I, there, I still have a certain amount of affection for those root beers. And ultimately, I like root beer almost in general. You know, there's few brands that I've had that weren't very good. But typically, I just like me some root beer. But if I'm going to go over there and invest in a root beer, excuse me, if I'm going to go back and get it again, I need it to give me something to hold on to. I need it to give me something... It's going to make it memorable. The black beer root beer is not memorable. It's very just okay. You know, I would say even against something like A&W, I would say honestly, because it's not just the sweetness, you know, but I would say even against A&W, it probably, it just has less personality than that. Because at least with A&W, you get sort of the, the vanilla kind of aspect to it. With this, it's just a very bog standard root beer. It's sweeter than it is anything else. I initially I was a little bit hopeful with that first swig because again, you know, I, I kind of was enjoying the somewhat butterscotch aspect to it that I picked up on, but that sort of faded out after that first drink and you know became much subtler. It was still there, but yeah, it's just a very mm, root beer. You know, nothing bad, but nothing great. If I'm recommending it though. I mean, it's, I don't know where it's available outside of, uh, you know, Rocket Fizz, but if you run out into it in the world, if you are the type of person where you, you, you're more of a mug and A&W type person, there's no reason to not pick this up. Uh, I'd say in terms of flavor and stuff like that, it's probably around the same as mug in terms of depth and personality. Maybe not as sweet though. I'll say that. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's a hard one for me to recommend because it's like, it's not bad, but at the same time, there's just, I, there's just so many better root beers out there. You know, this is, this is kind of a weak one. So I'm not going to tell you not to get it, but if you want to get it, it's not terrible. I don't think, I think if nothing else, you won't dislike it. It's just kind of, eh. 
But anyway, five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of your day, spectacular rest of your week, monumental rest of your month, stupendous rest of your year. Folks, go over there themselves a truly proper root beer-tastic rest of your life. And mind you, what that means varies from person to person. I'm not going to go over there and try to gatekeep your root beer, you know, experience. Final two things. Number one, try to bring some positivity into the world. It's not always possible. It is, however, always appreciated. But... What you do if you can't do it all the time, I know I can't do it all the time. Here's what you're going to do, folks. You're going to try not to be an asshole. Folks, not always the easiest thing in the world to not be an asshole. Trust me. I know it. I live it. I'm out there every day with you in it. Life can be stressful and frustrating and just bullshit sometimes, folks. And when we find ourselves in situations where we have to deal with said bullshit, oh, there's a poppers. See how big old poppers? I don't know, I don't know if you saw it in the thing, but I'm parked off to the side of a street and there's just a big old poppers hanging out the window always makes me feel better but anyway when we have to deal with said bullshit in our lives it's important we go over there whenever possible take a step back try to mitigate the level of assholishness in our lives hopefully do better for ourselves and for those around us very final thing folks do the thing whatever the thing is for you that's what i want you to go out and do folks what's your personal favorite brand of root beer are you more on the AW and mug side or are you more on the dads and uh Bark side, or do you think that that's all completely bullshit and I'm just talking out my ass? That's, a, you know, I'm not going to go over there and proclaim myself to be king of root beer. I, I, if somebody wanted to bestow said title upon me, I wouldn't be opposed, but, uh, you know, I would be interested kind of, you know, your personal take on it and stuff, because I do feel like root beer is one of those sodas. It's a little bit niche, even in the United States, and I do feel like when you get people who really get into it, there's very strong feelings about it, you know? I know I certainly have them, but I'd be interested to hear yours. So, anyway, 